I searched for a way of escape from the prison of sin that held me. But the more that I tried, the worse that it got. There was nothing I could do that would help me. But then I heard about a man named Jesus, who had grace enough for me, a vast supply. He had grace sufficient, the grace that I needed. He had grace to save a sinner like me. All-sufficient grace, grace so amazing, the riches of His grace, of this I'm undeserving. But God in His mercy saved a sinner like me. I'm redeemed and forgiven, my sins are forgotten, forever of tomorrow I'm free from the guilt of the past for I've traded my shackles for a glorious song I'm free praise the Lord free at last When I'd be grown and on my own, just who I might be. I could see a man, big and tall, with the wisdom of a king, lending others a helping hand, giving freedom's bill to rain. Well, I'd fantasize of being one in life, folks came to for advice. And I'd ask God that made this world, help me to tell them right. Sometimes in my fantasy, this man looked ten feet tall. But everyone knew where he stood by the way he walked and talked. I wanted to be just like my daddy and marry a lady like my mom. They had compassion and they loved each other. They both had a strong faith in God. They always had time for us children No matter the problems that we had And if I accomplished anything while living I'll owe it to my mother and my dad Well, time moved on and I was grown just like I dreamed before. Life's made some turns, a lot I've learned, I'm working for the Lord. Telling people every day about our coming King, lending others a helping hand, giving freedom to rain. I want it to be just like my daddy and my real lady like my mom. They both had a strong faith in God They always had time for us children No matter the problems that we had And if I accomplished anything while living I'll owe it to my mother and my dad If I accomplished anything while living Oh, I owe it to my mother and my dad.
Praise the Lord for that uh, song and thank God for reminding us of our um, responsibility this morning to preach the word. And we are here to do that by the grace of God and and thank God for also for that privilege and opportunity that the Lord has given to us this morning. Thank God for the enablement that the Lord has granted to us today. And like to welcome everyone sa atin pong programa dito po sa Workman's Treasure Study Series. And today po mga kapatid, we have an exciting ano po, new lesson series po mga kapatid every Wednesday. So we are to replace po ito po ang lesson po natin ngayon itong every Wednesday is entitled The Pattern of Biblical Submission. So yun po, it is, this is to replace sa atin pong King James Bible Interpretation every Wednesday. And dahil po mga kapatid ay... Ang atin pong King James Bible interpretation is somewhat related na sa magiging ta- sa topic natin presently sa studies on the King James Bible. And so we replace this also. Um, it's time po mga kapatid na to talk about these things after all of those doctrines, after all of those um, um, uh, truths na ating napag-usapan since we started dito po sa ating programa. 
Amen. And dito sa ating online ministry, and I think it's time to for have some application time and time to see the point of all those doctrines applied sa ating individual lives, applied sa ating home, applied sa ating marriages, applied sa ating local church. And that's why po mga kapatid, we will be dealing on these things in very important subject for all of us po mga kapatid. Amen. And salamat sa Panginoon sa pagkakataon. So every Wednesday, ito na po yung topic natin, the pattern of biblical submission. So mga kapatid, pwede nyo po itong, yan o no, pwede nyo po itong maging uh, gawin na ano po mga kapatid na uh, pwede kayo mag-invite, pwede kayong mag, uh, ano po, makinig at anybody na kailangan nyo ng ano po, kailangan nyo, ay kailangan din nila ng help pagdating po sa area po ng submission, especially sa Uh, pag-submit sa salita ng Diyos ayon sa disenyo na binigay ng Panginoon sa bawat isa, ayun, pwede tayong mag, mag ano po. And I believe this is profitable po sa bawat isa po sa atin. I believe this would be a, a great help and blessing sa isa po sa atin. So, please pray for this topic na ating pag-usapan. Hindi ko alam kung how long at uh, ano po natin, just kung, kung gaano kahabang discussion natin. But just let's go with the flow po mga kapatid ng anong gusto ng Holy Spirit kung saan tayo but let's take this slowly po mga kapatid at the same time para manamnam natin maintindihan po natin ang gustong i-point out ipaabot ng Panginoon po sa atin so this morning I'd like to welcome po ang bawat isa meron we have we have 14 dito sa Zoom at sa ngayon we still have 11 dito po sa atin pong Uh, FB Live and I know others are still coming but let's welcome kung anong sinong nandito at kasama na natin ngayong umaga okay, amen and um, let's start off with our host of course, si Brother Joma, salamat sa available time niya at ganun din sa ating assistant host na si Brother BC, good morning po sa, sa inyong dalawa salamat for ministering para po sa atin, amen And kasama din natin pat continually si ano po si um, uh, si ang Bukod family ngayong umaga. Ganon din si Pastor Randy kasama din natin uh, ngayong umaga dito sa meeting room. And kasama din natin si uh, Brother Elmer Domingo kasama din natin ngayong umaga. And ang Fabregas couple kasama muli natin. Ngayon si Brother uh, Brother Edmond and Sister Mila and ganun din ang, ang si Brother Ricky at saka yung Maano family and si Brother Rigor also joined us this morning si Brother Rigor nasa, although nasa workplace po siya but good to have him this morning and kasama din natin ngayong umaga si Sister Mary at saka sino ba daw si Sister Josie kasama din ngayong umaga Amen! So magandang umaga sa inyong dalawa Amen! Amen. Praise God for that. And uh, kasama din natin si Pastor Albert Gadi. Magandang umaga po, Pastor Albert Gadi. And praise God for that. And um, kasama natin siya, no? And uh, ating brother, comrade from Davao City. And good to have Pastor Albert Gadi with us this morning. And of course, ang si Teacher Jofi kasama din natin at ang Fernandez family. Magandang umaga po sa nandito sa Zoom Room. Amen. And also, uh, may mga greetings na po tayo, early greetings din dito po mga kapatid. And uh, from Sister Mary, sabi niya, praising and thanking God so much to know all that He is to us. Believers assuring us that He is the Alpha and Omega for our salvation, knowing our past, present, future of our life, who is our Creator and the Giver, the beginning and the end of our life until we see Him face to face, what all together... What an altogether lovely God we have. Amen. Thank God for His Word and thank God, Sir Roger, for all teaching, um, the teaching of all the truth we have learning. We have, we have been learning from your teachings from God's Word. And good morning, Sir, our dear evangelists of our time, Sir Roger, and all saints. Amen. And glory to God. Preach on, Sir. Prayers at your back. Amen. Thank you for that. And sabi din ni Pastor Albert, sabi niya, grace morning, blessed, blessed to have time joining this learning broadcast. Amen. Amen. Welcome po. Welcome kayong lahat and salamat po sa biyaya po ng Panginoon today. 
Ledako naman tayo sa mga kapatiran natin na nagigreet na ngayon sa Facebook Live. Let's start with Brother Sunny watching from Iloilo. Good to see Brother Sunny. Sabi niya, Amen. Good morning po muli, evangelist at sa lahat. Ganun din po sa iyo, Brother Sunny, at sa iyong pamilya. And si Sister Jesusa din. La, uh, Sister Jesusa uh, Lagasi Corpus. No? Kasama din natin. Watching from Baguio City. Good morning po sa inyo, sa inyong pamilya. Morning, Brother Sami. Good morning, Sam Sam. Hindi kita nakita kagabi. Sam Sam, no? Hindi nagpakita. Siguro tulog na yun. Bagsak na. Amen. Sabi niya, blessed morning po. Amen, amen. Brother Eliseo, our brother also watching from Alaminos, Pangasinan. And sabi ni Brother brother Eliseo, good morning po, Evangelist Roji at sa lahat ng brethren. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, also, Sister Evelyn Parr, sabi niya, amen. Blessed morning po muli. Sister Evelyn also joined us once again, watching from um, sa... Quezon City po mga kapatid sa Batasan Hills. Sabi niya, blessed morning po muli Evangelist Rog at sa lahat po ng brethren. Amen, amen. Thank God for that and good morning din sa iyong pamilya, Sister Evelyn. Sister Josie Dalang, nandito din siya sa Facebook. Sabi niya, blessed morning po. Ganun din sa iyo. Uh, Sister Josie, Brother Limwell, also Ripolio. Amen. Our brother also join us this morning dito sa Facebook. Sabi niya, good morning again to all. Sister Mercy Barrera, kasama din natin. Sabi niya, blessed morning again, brethren. Excited sa new topic. Amen. Praise God for that. And also, si Sister Kath Paredes, kasama din natin. And uh, sabi niya, once again, have a blessed day, evangelist, and to all. Thanking God for all the servants of God, to my local pastor, as well as to missionaries, evangelists, and other pastors who preach the word of God. Amen. That's right. And keep preaching, sir, and continue lifting the name of the Lord. Glory to Him alone. Amen, amen. Praise God for that. Sister Cherry Ruth also, kasama natin, Sister Cherry Ruth part. Sabi niya, amen. Blessed morning po ulit uh, sa lahat. And glory to God po. Amen. Praise God for that. And also, Brother John, our host, uh, sabi niya, good morning po Evangelist Roger sa lahat ng nakikinig. Salamat sa Panginoon. By His grace, we can learn more today be, and be instructed by His precious words. Excited for the new series, Preach On Sir. Amen, amen. Brother Virgilio Gabriel also join us watching from Masbate. And our brother from Masbate, sabi niya, good morning po Evangelist and to you all. Listening while working, putol-putol lang din. It's okay. Kapatid, and good to have you with us this morning. Amen, amen. Brother Nolison Kaligan also join us this morning. And sabi niya, a blessed morning po muli, Evangelist Roger at sa lahat. Thanking God sa opportunity na makapakinig muli ng kanyang mga salita. And Brother Nolison, by the way, is watching from Santiago City, Isabela. Salamat sa Panginoon sa new lesson series every Wednesday. I'm so excited again to learn truths from His Word and preach on, sir. All glory to God. So, it's a blessing to be here. So, excited also po mga kapatid sa gagawin po ng Panginoon. And uh, thank God sa mga bawat isa na kasama natin ngayon. So, without much ado po mga kapatid, let's hear one more song, one song this morning. Then after that, we'll go on ahead sa atin pong lesson ngayong umaga. Amen. So, let's ask our host and to play one good music this morning. And to prepare us for our lesson this morning. Brother Joms, please.
away Then I still would have to say God has been so good to me God has been so good to me I'm thankful for fine and Amen, amen. Praise God for that song, God Has Been So Good to Me. Giving us a church, giving us a family, giving us salvation, and many, many things. Amen. God is ever good, truly po mga kapatid. Amen. Let's pray and let's ask the Lord for wisdom and help today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. Thank you for for that uh, blessing, Lord, today, especially if that we can hear your words. Thank you sa inyong goodness sa amin ngayong araw na ito. Salamat, lalong-lalo na sa new series na aming pag-usapan today. And bless us today, Lord. Bless the series. And uh, every Wednesday, sana ito ay magiging, uh, ano po Lord, uh, profitable. Magiging uh, marami pong benefits ang makuha spiritually sa lahat na makikinig. Tulungan nyo kami, Lord, na habang kami ay nakikinig ng iyong salita, that we will be yielding to, to your word, Lord, obeying, submitting to it. And tulungan nyo kami na sana po ay, uh, Lord, ay mag-submit truly kami sa aming pag-usapan ngayong umaga. So, Lord, we commit to you this new series at we trust you, Lord, na ikaw po patuloy ang mag- mag-help sa amin sa pamamaget- pamamagitan ng lesson po na ito. We bless you now, Lord. Bless your people and bless your word. Bless your minister and help us to also bless you this morning. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So again, good morning po. So welcome po sa ating every Wednesday, our new series. And today is uh, Wednesday and today ay October 27. October 27 po mga kapatid. So put that in mind. that So we started this October 27, ang ating lesson po ngayon. So the pattern of biblical submission. Before po tayo po mga kapatid, bago po ako dadako doon sa doon sa submission part. I just like to um, uh, provide po mga kapatid a foundation and a background bakit uh, ganun ang title natin. Okay? Pattern of Biblical Submission. And what's going on and what is the issue really at hand. Bakit importante? Bakit kailangan natin itong matutunan? And let me give a little background and foundation po sa ating lesson Bago natin pupuntahin yung toro ano po, uh, as we go on Anyway, uh, this would serve as our introduction And this would also serve po mga kapatid na para ma-ilatag ma- i- po natin ng, um, by God's grace ng malinaw At para maintindihan po truly natin kung ano yung issue na pag-usapan So, hindi lingid sa ating kaalaman po mga kapatid. We know na sa ating generation, sa panahon po natin in these last days, and uh, truly, ang itong panahon na ito in the last days, and sabi, this is a perilous time. Okay, this is a perilous time. According to sa 2 Timothy chapter number 3, in the last days, perilous time shall come. And men shall be lovers of their own selves. Okay? Hindi ko alam kung nandyan ba ang ating mga mag-ano po mag, mag, uh, magbibigay ng verse, 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Anong sabi doon? Hindi ko sa ulo. And, um, sige po. And sabi niya, verse 2. Amen. 
For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, and disobedient to parents, and thankful and holy. The next verse, like you to take note, verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, and traitors, heady and high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And that is the exact description ng atin pong ng atin pong panahon ngayon. Amen. What makes this time perilous? It's because of the characteristic of these people that are living in this generation. And that is the characteristic ng mga tao living in this generation. That they make our ano po mga kapatid, they make our our ano po our time and generation so perilous because of this wicked evil men. Amen. So our generation, my generation, our generation, this present time, we are watching the death of churches. Now, as there is no such generation that ang mga churches ay talagang namamatay po mga kapatid in a sense na hindi na nagpapatuloy, they've been divided, broken churches, no pastors, no shepherd, no uh, members are rebellious and all of that. We have not seen as a time like this na you could just hear na na dissolve na yung church na ito, na dissolve na yung church na yan, na wala na to, wala na yan, nahulog na si pastor na ganito, nahulog na si pastor ganito, ganyan. At ito ito yung ito yung panahon na we we've seen a lot of churches. Amen. And also po mga kapatid, the death of a lot of churches and also the death of marriages. Amen. We we heard rampant, very rampant divorce, separation, left and right. And we've we've heard some ano po mga kapatid, some some infidelity, both the husband, the wife, kung saan na lang. And that is our time. That is the characteristic of our time. Amen. And we've watched this death of churches and of his marriages and even families. Na ang daming mga pamilya na nawawasak, nasisira, mga anak, at ano, sa panahon po natin yan. And as we know, it, it's very evident sa ating mga harapan, sa ating mata po, mga kapatid. So, among the many contributors or many factors po mga kapatid that uh, contributing to its destruction are ito yung immorality, ito yung rebellion, women's liberation, disobedience, and thankful, being unholy, and many, many more even without fear of the Lord. So, ang daming pwedeng factor na pwede nyo po mga kapatid. Last, last Monday, I talk about three factors that resulted to the nation of Israel na bakit nagkaganun sila. I talk about three A's that which is even also very true sa panahon po natin po mga kapatid. This could be very true. Our our churches, our families, our Christians, our, be, our brethren, believers, Christianity today is, is suffering of these three. One is apathy. The second is apostasy. The third one is anarchy. Okay? Anarchy. So, ito yung tatlo. Magkakasama yan palagi po mga kapatid. And I, I, I talk about a great deal of time dito sa topic po na ito last time sa Book of Hebrews when we had our series. At makikita po natin talagang it start with apathy. So of course when you when you say sympathetic or okay, you have empathy so pathy is simply means the feeling okay that affection that desire but when you have apathy that means you no longer feel you're apathetic you no longer fall in love or desire or have that affection so it, this is a departure okay from the heart so this is a departure from the heart so apathy so it is start it started with the heart so ganun usually eh. kaya nga nakita natin yung verse kanina 
that sabi doon ang pinakauna na description doon po mga kapatid sa sa perilous time na ito sa generation na ito ang pinakaunang description doon is men shall be lovers of their own selves so that is true that they departed already their love for God and fear for God and affection for God then to self they are now starting lovers of themselves they no longer care about who God is about loving God about serving God about loving others about caring for others that is apathy they, their heart is now gone cold of, of, of what the Bible says even Christians I'm sorry but that happens many times and often times ngayon sa panahon po natin Amen. So that is apathy. And the apathy is the entrance to apostasy. So if you, because bago ka mag-commit ng apostasy, apostasy is departure from the truth. Okay? Departure from the truth or departure from the faith. That is what we say that men shall depart from the faith. So before we, we, we experience apostasy or depart from doctrines, from the truth or from the faith, which is, mga kapatid, it is started with apathy. Sometimes, ang napapansin po natin is apostasy. But we never thought that ang root cause nito was apostasy. Kasi ang, ang apostasy was just an out, out, outward manifestation of that departure. It is just the fruit, but there is an inward departure. That departure, that departure happens in the heart po, mga kapatid. And... And dyan po nag-uumpisa ang lahat. Dyan po nag, nag-start po mga kapatid, ang mga bagay na ito. And uh, hindi natin ito napansin kasi it is inward, it is personal. But we, we started to depart from the feeling. We no longer feel after Him. That's apathy. We no longer feel after God. Amen. Then, of course, it, naturally it would followed, be followed by apostasy. We, we, we now depart from the truth. We don't care about the truth now. We don't care about doctrines now, about its purity, and all of that. That's apostasy. And that's very sad kung ang apostasy ay mag-manifest na sa church. Wala na po mga kapatid. And that would lead to the next one. That is anarchy. This is now without control. But when you speak of an anarchy po mga kapatid, no longer ano po mga kapatid, um, recognize authority. There is now chaos. There is now, ano po mga kapatid, um, parang disorder. It is out of order. And that is anarchy. Wala nang rules. Wala, wala na. Wala nang boundaries. That is anarchy. And everyone now is right with their own eyes. And yun, they are now disobedient to parents. They are now unthankful, unholy, truce breakers. What is that? That is an anarchy po mga kabatid. So yun ang nangyayari sa, sa atin po. And we have, sometimes we are attending a church, pero wala nang God system, wala na, it's anarchy. The pastor now is ruling the church with, their, with his own wisdom, with his own mind, and the members now is just doing what he wants because he said that he is at liberty and he's want, he needs to do. So wala na, wala, lang, wala nang regards authority. Authority ng Diyos, authority ng salita ng Diyos, authority ng men of God, authority ng sa ordinance of headship, sa authority ng husband, authority ng ano po mga kapatid, ng fathers, and Christians abandoned that already. And we experience even not just anarchy in our family, but anarchy in our churches, anarchy even, may conflict sa ating individual lives. And we have seen that. At maraming contributing factors po mga kapatid, but I believe it would start like this. It would start in this area, apostasy, uh, apathy, apostasy, then that leads to anarchy. That's usually po mga kapatid, ang umpisa. Okay? That's usually yung umpisa po mga kapatid. Then other contributing factors po mga kapatid would just result to immorality, rebellion, and all of that, and women's rebellion. Uh, uh, ano po, liberation, disobedience, and thankful without fear of the Lord. That is already an anarchy. 
that is already a manifestation of apathetic church or apostate church po mga kapatid. So all those things are like a strands. Para bang para ba siya mga lubid na in accord po mga kapatid? Amen. That is strangling our church na para ba alam mo yung parang lubid na talagang nilagay sa liig, talagang talagang ini strangle ang ating church, ang ang ating churches, ang ating family at ang ating ano po mga kapatid, marriages. It is because the believers are no longer filled with the spirit. We are now walking after the flesh. And a carnal believer now is going to have that, mga kapatid, a uh, carnal believer is going to have discord in his family. Pag may carnality, ako po, yun po ang problema. Amen. Pag merong carnality, may unregenerated members sa family, yan ang mag-umpisa ng chaos po, mga kapatid. At ang isang believer, if not walking in the spirit, but walking after the flesh, yun po ang ay napaka-potential threat na ma-destroy ang church, ma-destroy ang family po mga kapatid. Amen. Because that discord started between that individual and God. At once the Indian mag it would affect sa kanyang from his personal relationship with God, it will run through his family, it will run through his marriage, it will run through that local church po mga kapatid. And we know that presently, the devil is attacking po mga kapatid our families. Left and right, wherever you look, attacking our churches. And very sad, but that he is successful in many areas, the devil in his attack po mga kapatid. He attacks our family. Amen. Yan po yung pinaka number one target po ng jablo, ang family. Kasi pag ma-destroy, lalo na yung marriage, pag ma-destroy po yun, ma-destroy ang marriage, ma-destroy ang pamilya, ma-destroy po ang church. And we have already seen some of the ways he attacks the husband okay, relationship, the husband-wife relationship. And dyan po siya papasok. Amen. And uh, in an, ang, ang resulta niyan po mga kapatid, ang effect niyan or ang aftermath of that attack po mga kapatid, Ang family ang magpay ng tremendous price. Ang mga bata ang magpay ng tremendous price po mga kapatid. Now, even if you research and made some look at some statistics and it will provide you facts today. Tingnan niyo po ang mga news, tingnan mo yung mga statistics, magbibigay sa atin ng facts that we have moved a long way. We have already moved away po mga kapatid and it's a long way po mga kapatid from the divine plan of how God established the family. Lumayo na tayo doon at the center piece alam ng Diyos ay alam ng Jablo kung ano ang weakness. Paano ma-destroy yung leader ng home? Alam ng Jablo yan. He knew that from the beginning. And that is the same old serpent. Alam niyo yung mga serpent? Uh, nagbabago ng skin. Pero kahit magbabago-bago man siya ng skin, he is still the same serpent. And the same true doon po sa, doon po sa garden, na nandun yung serpent, iba-iba man ang kanyang approach ngayon, pabago-bago man ang kanyang presentation, amen, sa iba't ibang panahon, Pero that is still the same serpent. Nagpalit lang ng skin. And ganun din, that's why we have a warning doon as a serpent beguiled Eve. Amen. Through his subtlety, so also your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ in which we are going to look at. Now, I'd like you to, let's go go back again to 2 Timothy 3, verse number, uh, 2 Timothy 3. Let's look at verse number 5. Let's look at verse number 5. We end up yung mga characteristic of these people that makes this time perilous. Now look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So that is the kind of Christianity that we have right now. We have a cloak of Christianity or a form of Christianity. They look like a Christian. They talk like a Christian. They they. 
they ano po behave quote unquote like a Christian or they dress like a Christian. Amen. But the problem of many Christians today is just a form and there is no real substance. It is just a religion and there is no real substance. Intindihan po natin? They appear to be but in the heart inwardly there are rotten bones of dead men. Amen. And they are just like that sepulcher within. Amen. It would just belch out sa kanila po mga buhay just like an open sepulcher at maraming po mga dead man bones. Dead man's bones sa kanila po na nakatago po mga kapatid. There are so many skeleton in the closets po mga kapatid. Amen. And I'd like you to understand that. So, men already moved away from the divine plan of God established for the family. And they have now the form. But there's no real substance. Look at verse 6. Look at the look at the objective of the devil. For of this sort. Do you see that word? Of this sort. A sort is a is a variety or the a kind. Sa ganitong klase, sort of what? Ganitong klasing mga tao. For of this sort, okay, are they which creep into houses before he will attack the churches. Amen. They will first creep into houses. I'd like you to realize that. I'd like you to get that. Amen. The devil knows the point of weakness. Amen. This kind of people, amen, itong classing mga evil men, evil doers, would creep into houses. When you understand creep, it's not just, it is not an open Ano po, openly, ano po, lantaran na pagpasok sa mga houses. Pero dahan-dahan lang, nag-creeping, gumagapang, slowly pumapasok sila sa mga houses. They, they creep into houses unawares. They creep in unawares. So, yun po ang pag gumagapang, ginagapang nila. Ang mga tahanan. Kaya, minsan, nagtataka ang pastor, bakit ganito ang church namin? Bakit may divisions? Bakit may chaos? Bakit may mga quarrelings? Bakit parang walang love ang bawat isa? And he, try, he tried to see for himself, bakit ganito? He tried to assess, tried to look at the situation, but vainly he tried to find the source. Mga kapatid, tinignan niya ano bang, na may problema ba ako sa leadership? May problema ba dito ganon? But if he is going to study, the pastor is unaware na ang una palang ginapang ng jablo is yung pamilya. Because we understand that the church members are made up of families. And the devil knows the weakness. By the way, you cannot, you cannot destroy the church with a strong doctrine by just letting the false prophet come in no the pag ang church na yun ay naturuan walang lugar ang false prophet amen pero ang jablo makapasok pa rin kahit bible believing right divider king james church po yun paano po sa espiritu ni papa sa espiritu ni nanay sa espiritu ng isang mga young people or na mga children na magsisimba every Sunday, every Wednesday, at kung anong mga araw na may gawain. At ang kanilang espiritu, gumapang muna ang jablo sa kanilang tahanan. Ano, unti-unting kinonsum sila at yung espiritu na nakuha nila doon at yung attitude nila nakuha doon, madala nila sa church. And by and by, ito ay mga hawa. The devil really knows what he's doing. He is crafty. He is wise. And he knows what he's doing. He knows the weak point. That the weakness of the church, mga kapatid, are the families. Okay? The weakness of the church ay iyong mga families po, mga kapatid. And they creep in, not in the church. Wala makikita that they creep in in the church, but they creep into houses. And look at, look at the next part. Dun pa rin, dun pa rin sa verse. Balik ka, Mr. Host. And lead, 
Look at that. Lead, okay, captive, lead captive, silly women. So, ang kanilang bibiktimahin, ang kanilang prey, is yung mga silly women. Mga ignorant na babae, na mga hindi po nagsubmit, hindi po nag-aaral, hindi po ano po mga kapatid, hindi po right with God. And I'd like you to understand that they will lead captive silly women with sins, laden with sins, and led away with diverse lust. Now, kung mapapansin mo, ito, ito po yung two, two pattern na gusto ko makita sa inyo. In order for the devil to infiltrate the church, he has to go through the families. Kuha niyo po? And secondly, the next pattern is, in order for the devil to infiltrate the family, the devil will go through the ladies. Kita po natin? They will go through the ladies. They will go through the women. And the devil knew that from the beginning, in order to get into the man, I have to go to the woman. He knew that from the beginning by tempting the first man, Adam, through his wife. Amen. Because the devil knew that the weakness of the husband is the wife. The weakness of the family is the women. Tanggapin na natin to mga ladies because we have to take note that pagdating po sa vessel natin, the Bible calls us a weaker vessel. 2 Peter chapter number 3, you are to be honored as a weaker vessel. So the devil understand that point of weakness. Pag gagamitin ng, asa, ng, asa, ang as, ng jablo, ang asawang babae, sabog na ang leadership ng lalaki. Wasak na. Pag maapiktuhan yung leadership ng lalaki, wala na ang tahanan. Kasi remember, the leadership of the man is twofold sa home. One, his leadership in marriage as a husband and in leader, his leadership in the home as a father. But uh, the devil, kaya nga, the devil knew that that it has always been the weakness of the man and that woman po mga kapatid from the beginning. And you know, the accountability at the end of the day, it will not be accounted to the woman, but it is accounted to the, where? To the man. Because in the eyes of God, man is responsible. In the eyes of God, man is accountable because in the eyes of God, he is the ordained leader. He is the ordained leader in marriage. He is the ordained leader in the house or in the home, po mga kapatid, as a father and a husband. And alam po yan. So you see, now once mapasukan ang marriage, one must pasukan ang ang ano po mga kapatid, ang house, that's the time the devil could also get in to the church. Most especially, alam mo yun, madali lang i-destroy ang church eh. Now, gamitin lang si pastor's wife ng jablo to influence the pastor. Then the pastor, lest you forget, he is also a husband. He is also a father. Isang ganun lang wasak ang church. Gamitin lang yung mga men na tumatayo sa pulpito. Gamitin lang yung mga elders sa church. In a snap of a finger, wasak ang church. If it not would lead to apostasy, then, or dito po sa anarchy, ang kasunod, chaos po mga kabadid. So, anong punteria ng jablo? House. And wag natin kalimutan yun po mga kapatid. They will subvert. Ang goal nila is subvert nila yung hearers. I-destroy nila yung pundasyon mga kapatid. That's the word subvert to destroy one's foundation. Look at 2 Timothy 2 chapter. 
chapter 2 verse 14. Ang ginawa po nila, they will subvert. Amen. Ito po mga kapatid. And with that, I'd like you to look at verse 14. The Bible says in that verse 14 po mga kapatid, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. But I'd like you to look at, but to the subverting of the hearers. I'd like you to look at subverting of the hearers. So, subvert is sub means under. <coughs> so, anong is, ano na, destroy I overthrow nila yung foundation. Yan po ang target ng jablo. Sub. Amen. Ang pundasyon, may sira ang pundasyon ng tahanan at ang pundasyon ng pamilya, wasak, bagsak ang building. Alam po natin po mga kapatid. Gagamit din siya ng words to no profit. Gagamit siya ng counter teaching. Gagamit siya ng other na ano po mga kapatid. Other na principle na contrary sa utos ng Panginoon at dun siya dahan-dahan sisirain, titibagin niya yung pundasyon ng isang Kristiyano. Now look at look at Titus chapter number 1. I'd like you to look at Titus chapter number 1. May mga tao that whose mouth should be stopped. At ito yung mga klasing mga tao nag crept into, into the houses na yung kanilang mga bibig kailangang mapigil. In Titus chapter number 1, in verse number ano po mga kapatid in verse number 11 may mga verse 10 may mga vain talkers vain, verse 10 muna may mga vain talkers po sa verse 10 for there are many unruly remember yung mga disobedient to parents remember that yung mga unthankful and holy people sa second Timothy di ba they will creep into houses and unahin ang puntiriyahin nila yung babae at ano ang goal nila anong objective nila for there are many unruly and vain talkers. So, may mga mag, mag, magdadala ng contrary na principle na psychological, na humanistic, na hindi po nakasaad sa Biblia, and they are deceivers, and especially day of the circumcision, sa time nila, mga circumcision or mga hudyo. Ngayon, sa time natin, ang dami, hindi lang mga hudyo. Verse number 11, anong sabi sa verse 11? Whose mouth must be stopped? Who's, who subvert, look at that, who subvert whole houses. Itong mga tao na ito will subvert whole houses. They will not spare. They will subvert whole house. They will destroy. They will destroy all the foundation. Whole houses. Wala tong kinikilingan. Wala tong pinipili. Mapaanak, mapa Ma anak na lalaki, anak na babae, mapabata, maka young people, mga husband man yan, father man yan, mother man yan, wife man yan. The objective is to subvert whole houses. Teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. So merong contrary teaching today na gagamitin ng jablo na makapasok po mga kapatid. Hindi po, by the way, hindi po tayo mystical na sisirain ng jablo at guguluhin lang niya. Paano niya guguluhin ang tahanan? Magpasok ng ibang ideology sa isipan ni wife, sa isipan ni husband, na hindi, okay, sinabi ng Diyos. Do you remember how the devil infiltrated sa first marriage, sa first family, si Adam and Eve? Ano yung intrada ng jablo? Yea, had God said, so, ang una kagad niya is ikikwestiyon niya. Lalagyan niya ng question mark ang salita ng Diyos. Mag-cast siya ng doubt sa, sa veracity, sa truthfulness ng salita ng Diyos. Then he is going to introduce his own philosophy. In a form of teaching. In a form of principle, mga kapatid, or knowledge. Pag hindi tayo po mga kapatid, Maingat, hindi tayo strong sa Biblia ang ating pamilya, doon po tayo dadaliin po mga kapatid. At sasabihan, iwi-whisper sa wife, Oh, submit, submit ka dyan. Hindi naman yan karapat dapat ang husband mo. Mas better ka pa dyan sa kanya. Mas edukado ka. Mas matalino ka. Mas magaling ka mag-desisyon. Eh, bakit consider mo pa yung husband mo? 
He will Im- Im- implant a different kind of mindset. Anong headship, headship dyan? Parehas lang yan, depende lang yan sa tao. In a, of course, in a subtle way, that's the goal of the devil, he will corrupt the minds. And he will not spare. He is just like a grievous wolves, not sparing the flock. Remember that? Acts, remember, he will subvert whole houses. And when he attacked po mga kabatid, he's a grievous wolves. He's a ravenous wolves. Alam niyo yung word na ravenous? Taken from the word raven? I know, what is the description of a raven? A raven is a what? Selfish. Talagang parang kakainin lahat. At very ano yun, greedy. Kaya nga ravenous wolves. Talagang uubusin ka. Grievous wolves in a sense that when he attack, it would leave grief. It would leave a grief sa puso ng nakanyang na biktima. Remember, that's why ang mga, mga elders, mga pastors were told in Acts 20, 28. Look at that. In Acts 20, verse 28. Remember, he will subvert all houses. That means he will not spare. Walang titirahin, walang kikilanin kung sino man, inusinti man, o ano man, walang kikilanin. Sabi ng Bible, take it. Therefore unto yourselves, unto all the flock, which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer, to feed the church of God. Kaya may tagabantay. Bantayan, magig, magig mapagmasid. Ang elder na yon. Now look at verse 29. Anong sabi sa verse 29? Amen. There, may nilagay na guardian ang Panginoon. Kaya sabi ni Paul, For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves entering in among you, take note, not sparing the flock. The devil will not spare. I'm telling you. Kaya wag, ka, wag, wag mong paglaruan to. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. When he attacks, he will not spare. He will subvert whole houses. Amen. At ang mga tao na nag sa atin, they are mga subverted people. So we know po mga kapatid, we know that for the fact, amen, that any attack against the family, listen very carefully, that any attack against the family or against marriage is an attack on the individual. It is also an attack on the individual and it is also an attack to the church. It is also an attack to the society. And that is the repercussion po mga kabatid na resulta po mga kabatid ng atake ng Jablo and he knew that from the very beginning to destroy humanity to destroy humanity he attacked amen the first family and it destroyed the individual and it destroyed the whole humanity so the family right now brethren is being attacked by Satan our marriages is being attacked by Satan Our churches is being attacked by Satan. And from the beginning of the world, from the beginning of humanity, Satan has tried to upset the plan of God. Satan has tried to revoke that plan of God, to destroy that plan of God. He wants to destroy the family and the purposes. He uses a lot of things. He uses divorces. He uses separations. He uses adulteries. He uses fornication or whatever else he can. Whatever else he can. Because when the devil will, a- will attack, he will do all the means. Amen. He will do all the means. He will use all the means or by any means. He will do whatever else, mga kabatid, he can to fracture, to destroy, to damage the family. So it cannot do 
what God intended it to do. What God intends it to do. That's the goal of the devil. He wants to supplant. He wants to hinder. Amen. The plan and the purpose of God. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, and he will do the all the means. Amen. Tactics of the devil by using subtlety. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 11. Amen. Verse number 2. 2 Corinthians 11, verse number 2 and 3. The Bible says, sabi niya, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And yun ang goal. Dapat maging ma-present tayo na pure. Verse number 3. Look at verse 3. The Bible says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds, amen, be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So look at that by any means tactic. He will, less by any means, as the serpent, beguiled Eve. So it is always through the woman. At lahat ng strategy and tactics that would be effective po, mga kapatid. The devil would do that. He knows no boundary. He knows no rules. He will get it, whether it hurts, whether it destroy you. And this, by the way, that is the goal. And He will do all the means just to take you. Just to take us out. Po mga kapatid. Kung tayo, hindi tayo seryoso dito. But let me tell you this. Ang Jablo seryoso. And He will do all by any means. He knows no emotion. He knows no mercy. He knows no, ano po, compassion. He is purely evil. And He will do that to your little children. He will do that to your cute little daughter and, and sons. And He will do that to your guapo at magandang mga binatang anak. Amen. He doesn't care how much it hurts. He doesn't care how much you lost. That's how the devil will, will get you. That's how, because he is really e pure evil. And take note on that. Wag mong baby bibihin siya. Wag mong i-underestimate yan. Look at First Timothy, because he will take advantage. Kaunting puang. Saan niya papasukin? Through the woman. Kaunting puang. Look at 1 Timothy 5, verse number 14. 1 Timothy 5, verse 14. Look at, I will therefore that younger women marry, bear children, guide the house. Now look at, look at this. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachly. So it was, it was an instruction by the Apostle Paul that to the ladies to let not the enemy to have the opportunity to reproach you. Do you understand what the word to reproach is? Na ipahiya ka, put you in an open shame. Amen. To speak reproachly. Because the devil is just waiting any occasion, any opportunity, then he will reproach you all the way. He will, he will cast a reproach to you. He will laugh at you and he will mock you until you become a joke. Until you become an effective. And the Bible says, give no occasion to the adversary. We have an adversary to speak reproachly. And very sad po mga kapatid, many youths right now Amen. Had been despised. Many marriages and, and ano po mga kapatid, Christians right now and families, their testimony is a reproach. Okay lang sana, reproaches of Christ. 
Walang problema. You bear the reproaches of Christ. But the reproach due to sin, due to because of that fornication, adultery, and many sangkatutak na mga kasalanan po mga kapatid. At yun ang nagkukos ng kanilang reproaches. And there will become an open mockery before the heavenly places and before all men. And when they preach, they are just ano po, mocked and not taken seriously. And that's what the devil makes us do. Gawin tayong inutil. Gawin tayong useless. Gawin tayong cast away. And if we are not mindful, dito po sa serious threat na binibigay ng Panginoon sa atin, ay binibigay ng jablo sa atin. Now look at verse 15. And very sad, very sad, that verse 15, for some already turn aside after Satan. Amen. Ladies, young ladies, do not give occasion to the devil to speak reproachly. Now, we will learn by and by in this series how not to. Amen. Don't turn aside just like many. Some are already turned aside after Satan. Don't yield. Don't yield. Youth, mga young people, sabi ng Bible, let no man despise thy youth. Let no man despise thy youth. Amen. Supposedly po mga kapatid, we are an example. You are an example of the believer. But very sad that youth right now is being despised, being not honored. It is is not taken seriously. It is not taking a serious hearing and serious attention. Their youth their strength, their wisdom is being despised because they are now ineffective because the devil had been successfully, amen, invading them, infiltrating them, and their youth is now becoming useless. Hindi na magamit ng Panginoon. Ruined testimony. Ruined, ano po mga kapatid, desire and aspiration for God. You see, that's why po mga kapatid, looking as we go on in this lesson, ako po, and we will try to expose some of those folly in the home, in, in anything, and let's just yield to God. Let's just trust to God, and let's be willing to change. I'm just giving you, again, the background. I'm just giving you the present Ano po, mga kapatid, battles that we have right now. The present state of our generation. That we are under attack. Amen. We are under siege. Amen. And our adversary, the devil, had, had been doing that to us. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. Another example of the, the attack of the devil. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. I'd like to start po mga kapatid ng verse 1. I'd like you to go to all the way to verse 5. But let's start with verse 1. This is a, a very clear instruction sa salita ng Diyos. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Mga kapatid, it's not a bad idea if you would apply that physically sa mga hindi mo related. Sa hindi mo kaano-ano, it's not a bad idea, but rather it is good. Why? It would protect you. Pag hindi mo related na babae, hindi mo kaano-ano, hindi mo asawa, hindi mo anak, hindi mo kapamilya, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Amen. It's never been a bad idea. But God knows our frame. He knows Ano ang weakness ng tao? Because He knows. He designed us. That's why the provision of God, if you want to touch somebody, verse number 2, do not just think of ano po mga kapatid, a touch of fornication, a touch of ano po, madaming ways na matouch mo ang tao. But either ways, at least there are three ways na matouch mo ang tao. The touch, the physical contact, 
Ah, ito, ito, apat, no? The touch of the physical contact. The touch of fornication. May sexual contact. Amen. Physical contact, attach. Or the touch of belonging. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng touch of belonging? Do you remember the Lord Jesus Christ? When He was at that, ano po mga kapatid? At that, ano, at that, at that um, crowd when when he was performing a miracle while he was performing a miracle there is a woman who touched the hem of her garment of his garment that woman with an issue of blood remember that he just touched the hem of the garment dito po banda sa may likod that just the hem just the cloth hindi naman niya na touch in contact direct contact physically but Jesus Christ said who touched me Who touched me? Sabi ni, sabi ni Peter, Lord, nagtatanong kang who touched you while everyone push you, while everyone, ang daming crowd dito. Pero ang nabatid niya na touch is yung touch of faith ng woman na yon na meron pong issue blood. It was just a, it was just a garment. Now, this is for example, this is my cell phone. If this is my personal belonging, okay, if this is my personal belonging, if you touch this without my permission, you are touching me. Or any, if you touch a belonging, a clothes, or whatever, a bag ng isang ladies, you are indirectly touching also that lady. So that is a principle. Now another thing, another touch, the fourth form of touch, mga kapatid, is what? is touching the emotions. Touching the emotions. Alam niyo po yun, pag sinasabi mo, Uy, na-touch ako. That expression ay na-touch ako, touching emotions. Amen. So, mamumove ka, naawa ka, or na, na-touch ang iyong emotion in, in a way na, na, maha, na, uh, na ano mo siya, nagustuhan mo siya, or na bola ka niya, It is a form of a touch or naapektuhan ka na touch. Like for example, ano ang biblical principle niyan, sir? Let's look at Hebrews 4.16. Let's look at Hebrews 4.16. Anong sabi? Hebrews 4.16. Anong sabi doon? Tingnan natin. That's the, that's the principle. Sabi niya, a uh, verse number 15. Let's start with verse 15. Look at this. Verse 15. Ang sabi ng Bible, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So, he, of course, posi- uh, negative and negative is positive. So, pangakita po natin. So, ibig sabihin, Jesus Christ is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So, He is moved and He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Every time you are tempted, every time you despair, every time you sorrow, every time you have a need, He is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. So what is that? He's touched by emotionally. Ganun din po. Touch din yun. When a young woman, or when a young man would say sa isang babae, na ang ganda mo ngayon, na hindi niya kaano-ano, wala siyang relation, hindi niya ka mag-anak, but just a woman, another daughter, sabi ng isang, ang ganda mo ngayon, ikaw yung pinaka-cute, tapos pag naniwala naman yung babae na yon, dadamdamin niya yun, sabi, oh. pag sasabihin mong, I care for you, or whatever na pambubola na mga deceitful na mga lalaki, at naniwala naman si babae, na touch na actually, the, the, the man is touching the heart and the emotion ng woman. That is also a form of a touch. At do nag-umpisa ang maraming kasalanan. Do nag-umpisa ang maraming wrong relationship po mga kapatid. Kaya dun papasok ang jablo. Kaya yung young lady na yon hindi na magagamit sa Panginoon dahil nag-yield po siya, naniniwala po siya. So I'll deal on that, we'll discuss more of that But I'm just explaining to you the touch. 
So, it is good na hindi mo, kung hindi mo ka ano-ano, kung wala kang relation sa kanya, di mo asawa, di mo ka mag-anak, kahit sa ang form, huwag mong hawakan. Whether physical contact, whether fornication, whether whether touch ng belongings or touch ng emotion, huwag mong gawin yun. Gusto mo pala ng ganun. Gusto mo siyang itouch ang kanyang emotion, gusto mo siyang itouch physically, gusto mo siyang itouch sexually, gusto mo siyang itouch po mga kapatid ng any belonging. What was the advice of the what was the advice of the Bible? Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Amen. What's the advice? I'm still giving the settings ng ating ano po mga kapatid ng atin pong topic. Just bear with me. I'm providing the settings, the background, the state. Now, look at that. Verse 1, Now, concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. But if you want to touch a woman, do this, verse number 2. If you want, do verse number 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. You understand? Anong ipiprevent kaagad ng Panginoon? Why there should be no touching? To avoid fornication. Do that so that you will not lead to fornication. And the only way to escape fornication is let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Hindi sinabi ng Bible to avoid fornication. Let every man has his own girlfriend. Hindi sinabi ng Bible that let every woman have her own boyfriend. And that girlfriend, that boyfriend there, is an alien, it is a foreign term, and it's not in the Bible, never sanctioned in the Bible, po mga kapatid. But the Bible tells us to have his own wife or to have her own husband. And that's, this dating, dating, boyfriend, girlfriend thing is a game. And just do what the Bible says. If you want to be safe, if you don't want to be in danger and to be snared by the devil, then just do what God says. That's why it's submission. Let's submit. Amen. So now, let's go to verse 3. I'd like you to take note, paano papasok ang jablo? Una pa lang sa relationship. Number 2, look at that. Let the husband render unto the wife so, kung ikaw ay my wife, ay kung ikaw ay husband na, at meron kang asawa, you are now devoted, are you listening, husband, wife? Which we are going to explain as we go later on. You are now devoted, and you are now dedicated for your wife. If you are a wife, you are now dedicated, and you are now devoted for your husband alone. And not to other husbands. Intindihan po natin. And we have a responsibility. And take note on this. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. So there is that due regard. There is that due thing na gagawin dapat na hindi mo ipagkakait sa iyong wife. If you're a husband. And look at, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. That due benevolence is the good na dapat mong ipapakita or i ibigay. Amen. Sa iyong husband or sa iyong wife dahil hindi sa iyo yun, sa kanya yun. And then po natin. Now, malaman natin later on sa context kung ano itong due benevolence na ito. Let's look at verse number 4. The Bible says in verse 4, The wife hath not power of her own body. Ikaw, kung ikaw ay married na na asawang babae, wala kang ng kapangyarihan or karapatan sa iyong katawan. Kundi sino? But the husband. Sino yung may say sa iyong katawan? The husband. And likewise also, the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. Pero anong gagawin natin kung wala tayong kapangyarihan? But rather, 
i-render natin yung juvenevolence kung kailangan ni husband, kung kailangan ni wife, hindi natin i-defraud yun, hindi natin ipagkait, hindi natin i-deny, but we are told to render that juvenevolence. Nakita niya po? So when you render that juvenevolence, for example, sa marriage bed, I'll use that word, marriage bed. And that marriage bed is undefiled in Hebrews chapter number in Hebrews chapter number 13. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Amen. That is a bed undefiled. So that's pure. When you talk about the marriage bed, that is pure. And outside the marriage bed, it is whoremonger and adulterer, God will judge. Amen. So outside the marriage bed, nothing pure. But the marriage bed is very pure. It is sacred. It is sanctified by God. It is designed by God. Now, an example of the marriage bed, the husband has no power to say, Ayoko. Because that's not his call. That's the wife. When the wife will need that, the husband should render that due benevolence. And when the husband would need that, are you listening? I don't know kung ilang couples and young people or na nakikinig sa atin ngayon, and if the husband would be in need of that marriage bed, the wife has no power Amen. To deny, but rather to render due benevolence. Except, there's an exception because God is merciful. If there is a legitimate exception, kung hindi pwede talaga. Maybe it's sick. Maybe hindi ka talaga kaya. You're weak. At ganun po mga kapatid. And understanding in the part of the wife or in the part of the husband is needed. Pero kung walang other reason, Dahil ayaw mo lang. Dahil wala ka. Ayaw mo lang eh. Amen. You are defrauding. Now, you see the word Jew benevolence, rendering Jew benevolence and defrauding. Let's jump to verse 5. Look at verse 5. And this is how the devil will take advantage. This is how the devil would ruin your marriage and would ruin your family. Listen very carefully, O mga kapatid. And let's take this seriously. And this is the devil as far as his attack is concerned is very successful. At ano sabi ng Bible? Defraud ye not. That's why you are told to render in verse number 3, due benevolence, and you are told also to defraud ye not one the other. Pag sinabi mong defraud, you are not rendering what is due. You pinagkait mo. Kaya ang sag sagot, kaya ikaw, lalaki, you have no power of your own body, but the wife and the wife have no power of your own body, but the husband. Therefore, you render that due benevolence in that marriage bed. And secondly, you defraud not one the other. Amen. Do not defraud. And it's a sin when you defraud. And it would be a doom to your family. It would be a destruction to your marriage. When we we used to of defrauding and say, ayaw ko lang, not feel, I, I don't feel it. Pag palagi na lang ganyan po mga kapatid, be careful. Huwag po nating Sirain ang disenyo ng Panginoon. Remember, all of these things are very pure. We're not talking, walang kabastusan dito. Because the bed is undefiled. That is holy. The marriage bed is holy. It is sanctified by God. And when a husband and wife would defraud, ye not one the other. So just in case that you could not render that due benevolence, God is gracious and merciful. There is an exception. There is an exception. 
And what is the exception is, except it be with consent. So consent in a sense, paano po magkaroon ng consent? So there is an agreement between the husband and the wife. Like for example, dear, I can't. Example, may visit ako ngayon. You, you know what I mean. May visit ako ngayon. Amen. Dear, I can't. Uh, talagang masama yung pakiramdam ko. I'm sick. That is a consent. And there are many, many other, ano po, mga kapatid, re reasons. So, the husband and the wife should agree. And the husband or the wife should dwell in understanding in that area or should dwell in consideration. It should be considered. It should be heard out. Amen. But kung wala namang other na reason, wala tayong karapatan to do that. Now, pero that is not forever. That consent is only, di mo na, kasi quarantine ako ngayon, di pwede, baka magka-virus ka. <laughs> or whatever. So that is, ano po, agreed. And that is for a time. Now, when that was agreed, when the consent was given, the, the command of the Bible, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Nako, bakit? So, habang hindi nyo piniperform yung genu, Jew benevolence na yon, habang hindi mo ma-render yung gen, Jew benevolence na yon, at temporary, ma-withhold mo yon, at hindi mo maibigay sa yung partner, sa yung wife, po mga kapatid, or husband, Hindi ka kumpiyansa. Anong gagawin nyo? Sa mga panahon na hindi kayo pwede, you are at your most vulnerable. I'll say that again. Sa mga panahon na hindi kayo pwede, you are at your most vulnerable state. Bakit? Because you have a need. Alam niyo yung paggutom ka, nagda-diet ka, di ba? Nagda-diet ka for example. Huh, mag-abstain ka ng pagkain muna ng ganito. Tapos dumaan nakaamoy ka, dumaan yung paborito mong pagkain. Huh, at the more na padaan-daan yun, naggutom na gutom ka na at gustong-gusto man ng idivarian. You're vulnerable to be tempted. Tama? That's why Ang provision na sinabi ng Panginoon ay ganito. Habang, amen, nasa consent kayo sa inyong agreement, depende kung ano yung na-agreed nyo na time, ay huwag kang magkumpiyansa at gawin na lang gusto mo. Sa mga lalaki, napaka-vulnerable. Ganon din sa babae. Sa mga area na yan. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi, Yung need na yun ay nag-abstain kay nag-fasting ka dun sa panahon na yun. So, anong gagawin? Pray. Don't trust yourself. So, give yourselves to prayer. Lord, nangilangan ako, alam mo naman ang katawan ko, pero tulungan mo ako na ma-overcome. May mga dumadaan na maraming pride chicken, dapat hindi ako kakain, Lord. <laughs> dapat, hindi ko papansinin. Tulungan nyo akong ma... Naka-fasting naka ako ngayon, Lord. Hindi dapat. Naintindihan po natin? Could you imagine, naisip nyo na ba ngayon po, mga kapatid? Naisip nyo na ba na paano pag magkahiwalay ang husband and wife? Paano magkahiwalay? Nasa ibang lugar. Nasa, may given, nasa ibang bansa yung isa. Si husband, a young husband, is very active yan. Vigorous, active. At magkaroon ng need. Or si wife din, a young wife, is very active and vigorous. Magkaroon ng need. At sa panahong nangangailangan sila, hindi available ang isa. Doon, Papasok ang jablo. 
Now, look at the next verse. I, that, that, not that verse. Look at that verse. Pagkatapos nun, you give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Wag patagalin, but just for a time. Come again together. Again, hindi bastos ang ating King James Bible, ha? and you know what that means. You should come together again in that marriage bed. And next, ano sabi? That Satan, look at that, tempt you for your, tempt you not for your incontinency. Kasi sa time na nag-abstain kayong dalawa, sa time na nag-abstain kayong dalawa, merong incontinency. So, may incontentment sa part mo, may pangangailangan sa part mo, Amen. Kaya kung hindi mo gagawin to urgently at kung hindi ka magpipray, mga kapatid, kung hindi ka magtiwala sa Panginoon at may incontinency sa iyo, madali kang daliin ng jablo. Telling you, madali kang daliin ng jablo. Kaya, do you know of many, many families and marriages right now being broken down? Because of that. Ang jablo ay napakatuso. Napaka ano po mga kapatid. Ingat tayo. Kaya dapat, mag-isip-isip tayo. Tingnan po natin. Kaya, Pag ang may incontinency si lalaki, hindi na ibigay ni babae ang due benevolence na ibibigay niya dapat sa kanyang husband. Weak ang lalaki at that time. Hindi pa siya nagpipray. Hindi siya nagtitiwala sa Panginoon. Kumpiyansa lang siya. And there comes another woman trying to offer him sa kanyang kailangan. Yun. Wala na. It is start now of infidelity. It is na start now of betrayal. And that is now, the devil is now tearing apart piece by piece as a lion that would devour. Alam mo yun? Sabi doon, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. It's like a roaring lion, seek it whom he may devour. And when the lion will devour, he will devour it piece by piece. And he will pluck your family out piece by piece. Starting with the husband and the wife down to the children. And indeed, we are in the most perilous time. And ladies are susceptible. That's why he will creep in diretso sa bahayan. Creep in into houses and they will take over and capture that silly women. Amen. Which is laden with sins. Amen. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. Wag ligyan, sabi kanina, wag bigyan ng occasion ang adversary to speak reproachly. sa'yo. Wag. Kasi itong ginagawa natin sa ating marriages is we are providing the adversary the occasion. We are providing him the occasion to tempt us. Alam nyo yung jablo? Naalala nyo yung temptation ng Panginoong Jesus? Son of God yun ha? Alam ng jablo na ang Panginoong Jesus ay nagpa-fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. What was the first? Ano po mga kapatid? Temptation. Eh, abay, kung ikaw ay son of God, kung ikaw ay Diyos, why don't you turn these stones into bread and eat? Kasi alam niya eh. Approach niya yung weakness ng flesh eh. Alam na alam niya po mga kapatid eh. Kuhang-kuha niya. So, ganun ang jablo. I- lalo na sa atin. Huwag bigyan siya ng occasion. Look at ladies. Look at this verse. 1 Corinthians 11. Look at verse number 10, ladies. Merong mga wicked angels, merong mga fallen angels, 
that are watching you. And ang sabi ng verse 10, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. And if you study the context of that verse, in which we are going also to discuss in full details, po mga kawatid, in those verses, but just in a nutshell, the cover there is the type, is the picture of the coverture of the husband. And ibig sabihin, ang wife dapat, ay ang woman dapat, may authority. Meron siyang head. Merong covering ang kanyang head. And it pictures sa kanyang hair. And let the woman ought to cover her head because of the angels. Meron po mga principalities and powers. Dapat ang isang daughter may father authority. Ang isang wife may husband. May coverture siya. Amen. Kasi may mga masasamang loob. May mga wicked angels, wicked forces that are around the world are hunting our ladies. Because the devil knew kung paano at saan aatakihin ang pamilya. And that's the key. That's the weakest link. The devil will always find the weakest link in the family. And ladies, don't be offended with this. The Lord knew that. It was the design that you are a weaker vessel. Accept that and trust God. Do not rebel. Don't say you're strong. Don't, don't, don't trust yourselves. Don't trust your education. Don't trust. But submit, submit to what God says. That you ought to be in subjection, to be under to the headship of your husband, Ladies, you ought to be under to the headship of your father. And they are God-ordained guardian and protector. And mind you, our enemies are not just flesh and blood. But we're warring against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are people in high places looking at you pointing at you and he will appear he will appear amen as a gentleman and tell you hey you're so cute can i have your number hey and whatever tactics that the devil may give him don't forget why i'm doing this why are we showing these things? 2 Corinthians 2.11 is what I'm trying. I'm pointing. 2 Corinthians 2.11. Why? Why I'm warning you all of this? 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 is this. Verse number, I, first, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Ito po. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. First, this is to warn you because the enemy might get advantage of you. And when you don't take heed, amen, he will destroy you to the bone and he will not spare. He will tear our, tear our, our families in pieces. He will tear us apart and he will not spare. Remember that? And secondly, I don't want you to be ignorant of his devices. And he will take advantage of my emotions. He will take advantage of mga, mga defraudings. He will take advantage of mga quarrels. He will take advantage of mga any, any na mga unforgiving spirit. And he will take advantage. And that is still his old tricks. He never changed. The same serpent, he just changed his skin. Amen. He just changed his skin. But that's still the same old serpent. And he continued on that strategy that he knows that it worked. And it worked to the first woman and it will work to you and to our family. It worked to the first family and it will work to our marriages and to our family. And do not lay down your guards. Do not be ignorant of his devices 
And when you understand how your enemy work, amen, if you can identify accurately how your enemy works, then mga kapatid, alam mo, alam natin, then paano natin din siya i-counter? Paano natin ito i-defend ang ating mga sarili? So indeed, all of that na sinabi ko po sa inyo, po mga kapatid, is we are po mga kapatid, living in the most perilous times. It is the most perilous time for everyone. A perilous time for the head of the home. Perilous time for the husband and for the wife, for the mothers, for the pastors. Perilous times for the sons and for the daughters. Perilous time for everyone. We see po mga kapatid, right before our eyes, this God's ordained institution, the marriage, the home, the families, the churches. We see this God's ordained institution literally disintegrating, literally deteriorating, literally become a desolate, destroyed. And the devil literally left our homes with grief just like a grievous wolves not sparing the flock. We see some churches really disintegrating, deteriorating po mga kapatid. And that is our time. And we are eyewitnesses of these things. We cannot deny the reality of this. In every generation, the destruction of this institution take a greater and greater in number. Yes, there, the, the devil wrecked havoc during the early days of Christianity. It wrecked havoc to the, from 1800, 1900, and you know, in every generation, that this destruction becomes greater and greater. And we have watched, mga kapatid, not like other ages. In our time, is very rampant, and I believe it will even more rampant tomorrow and to the next generation. And this generation, this generation's children, kids, young people, will reap, mga kapatid, what their parents have sown. And if we are not careful, parents, couples, husband and wife, if we are not, if we are not careful with this, our children will reap the damages, the consequences of our wrongdoings. We better repent now and better consider and ask God for help po mga kapatid. And they'll plant seeds. You know, when we plant seeds of discord and of this anarchy that we're talking about, amen. You know, once it will bear fruit, it is, it multiplies. Just one seed and it multiplies. So the consequences is greater in number than the seed being sown. The fruits is always been far greater in number than the seed sown. And that is always the impact po mga kapatid. So the rising numbers of this broken institution, we know that they are accelerating so fast po mga kapatid. They are accelerating, moving so fast. And you know that. We know that po mga kapatid. So, I'm just trying to provide you the settings of these things. Why this discussion is very needful sa atin pong panahon, sa ating time, and further details na makikita po natin. And there are specific attacks on the family that is very rampant today. The attack on the fathers, ako po, the attack on the husbands, the abandoned 
fathers right now abandon their God-given role. That was the success of the enemy's attack. They're supposed to be in charge. They're supposed to be the head. They're supposed to be the leader. But they abandoned their God-given role. They gave it to the pastors. They gave it to the government. They gave it to another husband. They gave it to their wife. They gave it to their children. Can you think about that? And what would happen if we will destroy God's design? The husband supposed to be leading. The, the husband are supposed to be the decision makers. But they abandon that God-given role. At pinaubaya po nila sa ibang tao. Because they don't want to be accountable. But whether you like it or not, husband, fathers, you are responsible. You cannot just walk away from such God-given, amen, responsibility from us. And husbands right now, fathers right now, they lose their concentration on loving and protecting the family. They lose concentration on loving and protecting the family, providing for the family, caring for the family, and offering them strength and stability and character and leadership and solid Bible teaching and bringing them up, amen, of the things of God. And they lose focus. Amen. They lose that urgency and that concentration of doing their responsibility. They're supposed to be protecting. They're supposed to be providing. They're supposed to be loving their family, caring for their family, and providing them the strength that their family be needing, that stability that their family be needing, that character, that leadership. Amen. That solid instructions and teachings that would be coming from the father or husband. And yun po nangyayari. They become preoccupied. The husband becomes so preoccupied with their own desire, with their own business, with their own money making, with their own quote-unquote ministry. And they try to accumulate they're preoccupied by accumulating material things, lasting after other women and other things that tend to overthrow their priorities. And that's the problem, Puma. And that is very sad to note. Amen. Not only the devil has been attacking the husband and the fathers, the devil has been attacking the wife and the mothers. And in what area that the devil has been successfully infiltrating the women? And what else? Ano yun? The women abandon their homes. And that's very sad. Women abandon their homes. They went to far places just to seek for greener pasture dahil maraming pangangailangan. And in exchange, amen, just to get money, just to get this and that. Now, we understand that the need is legitimate, but wala na bang ibang option? And they are willing to exchange, amen, the safety, amen, and the future of their children just for that. They're chasing something to provide in a smoke screen, a good living. But they haven't given the, the real care of a mother to their children. The real love, amen, of the wife to the, the real care and many things. They abandon their homes. And do you not know that that is an outright rebellion from the Word of God when you do that? Because we, we, you're supposed to be keepers at home. You're supposed to guide the house. Amen. And here comes, ano po mga kapatid? They abandon their homes. Amen. They're working mothers outside the home. 
And they are no longer that homebody. They are no longer the friend in the home, but they are office mothers. Working mothers. And what happened to their little youngs and little children? They let the maids, the yaya, the another mother, to nurse their children, to take care of their children. They gave it to daycare centers. They gave it to schools. Because they abandoned their God-given role. I'll detail on that. I'm just showing you some of this attack. Equality. Women equality. No, we're equal. We're the same. Depende po yun. Who has the gold takes the rule. So I have the, I have the, the wife would say, I have the money, I have a good, I have the good work, the good job, then ikaw malit lang asawad mo, therefore I should take the lead. That is women liberation. Women now leading the homes. And you know, it's very sad. And not, nothing to be proud of. Women now has no natural affection. Imagine, kakapanganak lang. Kaya, barami ngayon, mas close ang mas close ang bata sa yaya or sa lola kaysa sa sarili niyang nanay. Bakit? Ano nangyari? Kasi career woman si mama eh. Career oriented si mama eh. Now, am I communicating? Is this too much? Is this, you know what? You know, I know deep inside your heart, you want to do the will of God. I know that. But we have been succumbed and swallowed with this world system that we could no longer discern what is right. Amen. We, we could no longer discern on what should be the God-given role, that, that divine design, that pattern. And we end up yielding and it costs our families and distraction upon distraction and the right attitude for those who are listening right now. Do not debate with this. Amen. Do not try to make excuses. But rather, the right attitude when you hear this, po mga kapatid, admit, accept, yearn, desire, pray, Lord, help me. Lord, help us. Give me courage, Lord. Give me grace, Lord. Do not rebel. Do not complain. But be thankful to God. That should be the right attitude, the right spirit if you're listening. If you are caught up, Mga kapatid, with that situation, but yearn, mourn, mourn. And say, Lord, mabigyan mo ko ng grace. Please, arrange my family. Lord, I want to obey you. Ganun dapat. We have not yet, mga kapatid, approached to the real instructions. I'm just letting you know what's going on today. Amen. What's going on today? Because Christianity right now is, you know what the problem is? The world is now occupying the church. Its system is now occupying the church. At we see mothers have no more natural affection to their youngs, to their children. Buti pang hayop. May natural affection sa kanilang bata, mga anak. Buti pang manok. Buti pang ang baboy. Buti pang aso. Oh, sige, galawin mong anak nila, lagot ka. 
And they'll not abandon. La, lead sunod lang. Saan sa'yo? That's a natural affection. Ang sabi ng mga nanay, I'm sorry my son. I'm sorry my daughter. Para to sa iyong kinabukasan. Kinabukasan. Pagkatapos mo dun, wala na siyang future kasi destroyed na. Because you are just thinking sa kanyang kinabukasan about pera. Because we are just thinking that that what dominates the our life is just money. But we never value our the the we never value the importance of our presence with them. That's why we end up abandoned. And sadly, many of them fall into sexual sins. Bakit? Because of defrauding. You know, that's very sad. That has been the, the, the devil's trick. And that, that our children had been attacked. Child, our children had been abandoned at home, abandoned by the father, abandoned by the parents, uh, by the mothers. And they, they, their teacher now is the TV. They are now raised by daycare centers and they are now raised by schools with ungodly teachers and many more. Instead, supposedly, ang mag-provide sa kanila ng godly example and godly teaching and instruction is the parents, but they abandon that God-given responsibility and give it to others. And do you think that something, oh, successful ang anak ko, oh, you know, wala po. Children right now are abused. Children right now are exploited. Children right now po, mga kabatid, ay uh, napaka- Rebellious generation. Ngayon ka lang makakita ng mga bata na mang, mang, mang bato ng parents, ng very disobedient, very rebellious, very anong kulang? Because during their formative years, during the years that they're supposed to be trained, that they're supposed to be taught with the godly deeds and godly things, their parents were not there. And when their parents, they just reap what they've sown and they cry, Oh, hindi naman ako nagkulang sa iyo anak eh. Pinigay ko naman lahat ng gusto mo eh. Pinagbilihan kita ng ginto. Pinaaral kita sa magandang eskwilaan. Pinigyan kita ng ganito. Pinigyan... No, 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 no. What they actually need is you. And you're not there. And now you say, Oh, wala akong pinagkait sa iyo. Bakit mo to ginawa sa akin? We miss the point. Because we never trusted God. We, we try to, we are deceived sa magandang kinabukasan, sa magandang future, that what we are actually doing is we rob our children and deprived our children from the best future that they're supposed to enjoy. And tayo dapat ang sumama po doon. Let's wake up, Christians. Let's stop defending ourselves. Let's stop making excuses. This is it. And let's mourn at it. Po mga kapatid. Let's ask God for help. Amen. Because ang strategy ng ating kalaban, He will always dwell on that sinful nature of ours. He will always dwell on that. Atakihin niya yung sinful nature na yon. Pag ikaw ay hindi ka, ano po mga kapatid? Nako, he will take advantage of that. Just like kagaya po, pag ikaw nagdi-defraud tayo sa marriages, nako, lagot yung sinful nature na yan. At dyan siya nag-feed. Alam niya yung weakness. And he will, his strategy is on the sinful nature. Number two, his strategy on the failure of the parents. And once you failed to do what you're supposed to do, bang! That's the end ng ating pamilya po, mga kapatid. And we're not exaggerating things. And if you still desire for a Christian home, for a godly family, once we failed, no turning back. Because the devil will get advantage of our failure. Because the, de- the devil is just like a roaring lion, seek it whom he may devour. Po, mga we are told in the Bible, neither give place to the devil. 
Because once you give place to the devil, he will take advantage right in an instant in our failures, parents. And also, the devil will attack on the integrated humanistic philosophy. He will attack on that integrated humanistic philosophy through educational system, through humanistic philosophy by implanting some kind of mindset and thoughts that is contrary to the Bible. That's why we are told, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. At yun po yung atak atakihin po nila tayo sa area po na yun. And they are the opposition, opposing ideas, opposing principles ng Word of God. And that that is where the devil would like to take off. I'm telling you, wag mong i-underestimate ang kaaway po natin. So, mga kapatid, the only hope na lang natin is for us to proclaim. Ito na lang ang hope, Anthony. Let us proclaim. Let us reaffirm. Let us reassert the truth from God's word. Let's not stop preaching. Let's not stop warning our people. Let's still preach this. Is this a lost cause? No, it's not. There are still few who are still preaching hard on this area. This is not an unforgotten issue in life. There are still few good men that are still warning us about the danger of these things. Amen. And thank God we have opportunity. And if you are just serious... In this instruction, you stay a little every Wednesday. And may God use this lesson as we go on po mga kapatid. Christian, let's, let's hold firm on that, that biblical heritage of truth. Let's not just abandon and, and all of that. And churches, uh, churches nothing ngayon. We have to begin again to preach. Let's begin again to teach and warn about these things. About this danger, po mga kapatid. And there are many. And sana po ay tulungan nawa tayo ng Panginoon. Guide nawa tayo ng Panginoon. And that's the setting that I'd like to provide para makita po natin yung need natin, saan tayo mag sa Panginoon. At ito na tayo. We are now living in the life of consequence. But, sir, can we still get out? Is there still hope? Brethren, there's much hope. Yes, we can still jump out of that. Amen. Fall. And we can still do something because God is gracious, God is merciful. Sir, may magagawa pa ba tayo? Marami pa. All we have to do is just let's go back to the Bible. Let's start to proclaim it. Let's start to reaffirm its truth and let's start to reassert its truth. Apply it prayerfully in our lives and let's have good attitude. Let's have right attitude with regards to the words of God. Let's not be rebellious. Let's not be adversarial to those who are preaching. Let's, let's be prayerful. And let's respond rightly with a humble heart and say, Lord, I need this preaching. Lord, I need this lesson. Lord, yes, I am guilty and I am caught up with this situation. But Lord, I will not make excuses. I know by your grace and by your mercy, you will help me. Amen. Help me, Lord, to get out. Help me as I apply by and by. By faith, Lord, I will take your words. Amen. And that should be our right attitude. And brethren, thank you for listening. And I think I have given you already the, the settings of these things. But I hope you take that seriously. So we'll, we'll talk about that divine pattern next week. And in, in the next weeks pa, nagagawin po natin, Lord willing, by God's grace only, if He give, will give us strength to preach and this, we will do this po mga kapatid. So pray for this message. Pray for you as a husband, as a father, as a son, as a daughter, as a young man, young woman. 
and how this message and this instruction would find a place in your heart. Amen. So thank you very much. And uh, sa Zoom, dito sa brethren natin, we have good numbers sa Zoom and even good numbers dito sa ating pong Facebook Live. And what a blessing to be here. And God bless everyone. And uh, praise, praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. Let's pray. Lord, salamat sa nauna naming introdu introduction and settings, Lord, ng aming magiging series sa week, uh, sa every Wednesday. Ikaw po patuloy na magpala nito, magbless nito, at maging kagamit-gamit, Panginoon, sa mga puso ng mga mananampalataya. Tulungan nyo kami. And as we continue dito, ay hindi namin ito mamadaliin. Hindi po namin to Lord, uh, basta-bastahin. But nanam namin po namin, Lord, ang mga makukuha namin mga instruction dito po sa lesson po na ito. And we bless you now, Lord, and we are so thankful. Give us really right attitude to respond correctly and rightly po, Panginoon, sa inyo po mga salita. Bless our hearts now. Bless those saints na nakinig ngayon. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Whew, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, brethren. Have a good day. Good day ahead. Amen. And glory, glory to God. Amen. When I'd be grown and on my own, just who I might be I could see a man, big and tall, with the wisdom of a king Lending others a helping hand, giving freedom's bill to rain Well, I'd fantasize of being one in life, folks came to for advice And I'd ask God that made this world, help me to tell them right Sometimes in my fantasy, this man looked ten feet tall But everyone knew where he stood by the way he walked and talked I wanted to be just like my daddy And marry a lady like my mom They had compassion and they loved each other They both had a strong faith in God they always had time for us children No matter the problems that we had And if I accomplished anything while living I'll owe it to my mother and my dad Well, time moved on and I was grown just like I dreamed before Life's made some turns, a lot I've learned, I'm working for the Lord Telling people every day about our coming King Lending others a helping hand, giving freedom to rain I want it to be just like my daddy And marry a lady like my mom They both had a strong faith in God They always had time for us children No matter the problems that we had And if I accomplished anything while living I'll owe it to my mother and my dad If I accomplished anything while living Oh, I owe it to my mother and my dad.